welcome to the keynote podcast from Kingdom Faith. Today's message is by Pastor Colin Urquhart. Now I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation. Because what I want to show you is what happens, what is going on in the heavenly places and what will continue to go on in heavenly places until Jesus comes again. Because, as I said, we are joining in with what is taking place in the heavenlies. There's no point in us trying to do something ourselves that is going to be different because we need uh, God to enable us to overcome the spiritual powers of wickedness on the earth and in heavenly places. Now, everything in heaven is centered on the Lamb. So you see, what I said yesterday is our victory is in the blood of the Lamb. We worship the Lamb. If if we're going to have breakthrough worship, it's going to be because we worship the Lamb. Now, turn, first of all, to chapter 5. Verse 6. Now, God is giving to John this revelation of what is going on in heavenly places now, and of course, prophetically, what will go on in heavenly places until Jesus comes again. So, in verse 6, then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. Then I saw the Lamb in the center of the throne. Now, heaven is God's throne, earth is his footstool. So there, right in the center of heaven, is the Lamb. Doesn't call him Jesus, doesn't call him Christ, doesn't call him Messiah, calls him the Lamb. Now, this is very emphatic, and it's very significant. If you look at verse 8, no one had been found worthy to take the scroll, and of course, within the scroll, there was the unfolding purpose of God and how that would be established. No one was found worthy to open the scroll except the Lamb. So in verse 8, we read, And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Now, when it says fall down, it means they prostrate themselves before him. In the book of Psalms, there's a lot of instructions about worship. And many times it says in most of your translations that we bow before the Lord in worship. What the Hebrew word actually means is to prostrate yourself before him. But most translations don't do that. If if you look in the um, 150 uh, themes... Of course, I have to translate some of the Old Testament in that, and I do you translate it accurately as prostrate. Before the Lamb of God, those closest to him prostrate themselves before him because he is so awesome. It's the Lamb that they are prostrating themselves before. So the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Verse 9, they sang a new song. Who to? The Lamb. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. So we can only reign on the earth through the Lamb. 
Are you hearing me? All the emphasis is on the land. God has made us a kingdom, and we can reign through faith in the land. Then look at verse 12. All those that are surrounding the throne, in a loud voice they sing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. As you know, in Kingdom Faith, we've had times of revival in former years, and whenever that's happened, we're singing to the Lamb. We have songs about the Lamb and about the blood. That's always, always the case in times of revival. And revival is really a time of breakthrough. It's a time of victory. It's a time of overcoming. So everything is focused here in heaven on the land. Then you read in verse 13, Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. It's all focused on the Lamb. Now, this scroll has seven seals. Chapter 6, verse 1, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. There's no time for us to talk about what happens. Verse 3, the Lamb opened the second seal. Verse 5, when the Lamb opened the third seal. Verse 7, when the Lamb opened the fourth seal. Verse 9, when he opened the fifth seal. Verse 12, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. You see, it's the Lamb who is opening up all that is going to happen through the purposes of God. Are you there? You're breathing. Okay. Then if we look at verse 16, uh, all the kings of the earth and so on and so on and so on, they call to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Because it's the Lamb who is sacrificed for us who ultimately will be the judge. Now if you go on to chapter 7, are you all breathing still? Verse 9, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. So all the heavenly host, when they worship, are standing before the Lamb. When we worship here, we're standing before the Lamb. We're worshiping the Lamb who is seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne, so they're all now prostrating themselves. Uh, and worship God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then if you go down to verse 14, they, he, he asks, who, who are these in white robes? They are those who have come out of the great tribulation, out of all the conflict they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, because they're washed by the blood of the Lamb, therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they be hungry. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of their throne will be their shepherd. The one who is actually shepherding us now, the good shepherd, is the lamb who is at the center of the throne. He is the good shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And then in chapter 8, verse 1, 
he opens the seventh seal. And that releases the activity of all the seven angels that you read about in the subsequent chapters. But it all comes from the initiative taken by the Lamb of God. Go on to chapter 12. Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and power of the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. Now isn't that what we need? Isn't that what we want? We need to be living in the good of the salvation, of the power of his kingdom. He's been talking to us this term already much about the kingdom and knowing that we have the authority of his Christ. Why? For the accuser of our brethren, this is the one we're coming against when we pray. This is the prince of darkness that has to be pushed back. For the accuser of our brethren who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. How? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony about the Lamb. See, everything focuses on the Lamb. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So those who are seen by John in the glory of heaven are those who overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony about the victory of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Chapter 13, verse 8. Do you believe that your name is written in the book of life? Well, look at what it says in verse 8. All the inhabitants uh, of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb. It's the Lamb's book of life in which your name has been written, belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. What you have to understand, you see, is that the Lamb was slain before he was born, before creation came into being. It was all the plan of God. It was all the predestined purpose of God. It was the outworking of what he saw that he would do at his appointed time. It was no accident. Actually, the chief priests and Pilate, they didn't determine that Jesus would be crucified even before the creation of the world. God had planned the way of salvation for mankind. So even before he created man, he knew that man would fall and he knew that redemption would be needed. Hallelujah that he has provided that. Go on to chapter 14, verse 1. Then I looked and there before me was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion. Everything you see is focused on the Lamb. Verse 4. These are those who did not defile themselves with women for they kept themselves pure. They followed the Lamb wherever he goes. When did they do that? When they were on earth. Not when they were in heaven, but when they were on earth. They followed the Lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and to the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Go on to chapter 15, verse 2. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire and standing beside the sea those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and over the number of his name. Right, who is victorious? They, had, they held harps given them by God and sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Those who were victorious were those who sang the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O God, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Hallelujah. Go on to chapter 17. This is everything that is going to unfold between now and when Jesus comes again. Everything focused on the activity of the Lamb. 
chapter 17, verse 13. The powers of darkness that we are opposing oppose us. I'll talk about that in a moment. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make war against the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them. Who is going to overcome all the powers of darkness? The lamb. Why is he going to overcome? Because on the cross he has overcome. So if we're going to see that overcoming, breakthrough, victorious uh, power that we want to see in response to our prayer, it's going to be through the lamb, through the whole focus on the lamb of God. But the Lamb will overcome them because He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And with Him will be be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. We're followers of the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. It's faith rising up within you. Verse 9, chapter, uh, chapter 19, verse 6. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters. And like peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come. So we are looking forward to the wedding of the Lamb. Not just the wedding of Jesus Christ or the wedding of the Son of God, but the wedding of the Lamb. You are going to be married for all eternity to the Lamb. So you need to know him as the lamb. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, For the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. That's us. Amen? We're the bride of the lamb. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. That's us. We're here in the book. Then the angel said to me, Write, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. It's the wedding supper of the Lamb. This, that we're going to celebrate this morning, is like a prophetic foretelling of the wedding supper of the Lamb. I'll talk about communion in in just a moment, because this is a vital part of the victory that God is going to give us. Chapter 21, verse 9. One of the seven angels had the seven bowls full of the seven plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. You need to know the one who you're going to be married to. You're going to be married to the Lamb. Verse 14. The wall of the city, this heavenly Jerusalem, The walls of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. You see, while he was on earth, they weren't known as the 12 apostles of the Lamb, even though John said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But now, here in heaven, their their name, if you like, they are denoted as the apostles of the Lamb, because everything is focused on the Lamb. Verse 22, um, I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon or to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The Lamb of God is flooding the heavenlies with the light of his glory. So if we're going to see the light of his glory released here amongst us, it's going to be through the Lamb of God. Are we getting this? Uh, Verse 27. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb book of life and then in chapter 22 verse 1 then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb 
down the middle of the great uh, street of the city. And so on, verse 3, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. So everything from now until Jesus comes again is focused on the Lamb. And that's why if we are going to have breakthrough in reality and not just words, not just make a noise, but actually see situations being completely transformed and changed, it's only going to be because of our focus on the blood of the Lamb. Everything focused on the blood. Now, of course, that blood cleanses us. And it's important, therefore, that we are cleansed by the blood so that we can be effective in exercising the authority of the blood over the enemy. We are not going to be effective if there's anything in our lives, any ground upon which the enemy can stand to accuse us. So the blood of the Lamb washes us clean from all accusation, from not only from guilt and shame, but from anything that the devil could accuse us of. He has got no recourse, no excuse, no ability to stand against us if we come against him because we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. And this is why Jesus said to the disciples that he gave them all authority over the power of the enemy and nothing would harm them. Why? Because when when they came against the power of the enemy, they would be washed in the Lamb. That's prophetic of what was going to happen after the cross and resurrection. In the letter to Hebrews, we read that Jesus entered into the eternal Holy of Holies. He did not carry with him an offering of the blood of goats and calves. No, he entered into the Holy of Holies only once with the offering of his own blood. And by that blood, he has made it possible for us to be one with God eternally. He literally bought us with the price of his own blood. Jesus returned. He could enter into the Holy of Holies in heaven because of the blood. The only way that we can enter into the Holy of Holies is through the blood. Not just because we have a particular song or way of worshipping. It's always through the blood. And that's what God wants. He wants us to come to draw near to his throne with sincere hearts uh, in, in, in faith because our trust is in the blood. To wash us completely clean, Make us pure, perfect, holy in his sight, as I was talking about the other day. Now, the devil believes in the power of communion more than most Christians. Let me just give you a bit of testimony. This is a word of testimony about the blood. Some years ago, when actually we were still in the Hyde living as a community. This is kingdom faith in its former days. The local Satanists were praying against us. At that time, there was very little spiritual activity in this part of Sussex. If you, if you were to go now through churches where the spirit is moving, you would find either former members of kingdom faith or people that came to our meetings at the Hyde and were impacted by the Spirit, then went back to their churches and things happened. A whole sort of ferment was taking place in this part of Sussex at that time. And the Satanists, of course, were aware of this and so were praying against us. Now, there's no time to go into the whole story. But actually, as a result of that, God gave us the victory in the sense that 
we ministered to some of the Satanists that had been praying against us. There's no time for me to go into how that came about. It did come about. But when we were ministering to those Satanists, of course, we learned a lot about Satanism and how they were actually praying against us. We weren't affected by that, of course, because we were protected by the blood of the Lamb. So we knew that this was happening before these Satanists turned up. It was just the evidence. But one of the things that we found is that Satanists are taught they are never, ever to take the cup in Holy Communion because if they touch that, they will die. Why? Because this signifies the blood of the Lamb. And Satan knows the only thing that overcomes him is the blood of the Lamb. Because the blood of the Lamb has already defeated him. So Satanists are told, you must not drink from this cup. Because Satan understands how powerful it is, even if Christians don't. Because Satan knows what has been accomplished by the blood of the Lamb. His defeat. And there was one occasion, I mean, we, we knew that with, with these Satanists, when we were having communion, they could not stand to be in the room. They would go out of the room. Somebody would go out to be with them. Once they had come to the point of surrendering their lives to Jesus, then they could, then they could, uh, they could stand it. They could be there in the communion service. But we knew that one of the breakthrough points would be for them to actually receive communion. So what we used to do was not to put them in a difficult situation publicly, but we would have a, a sort of a, a private uh, communion service with just myself and perhaps one or two others that had been specifically ministering to that particular person. And we would have a little communion service so that they could take these gifts. The bread was no problem. They took the bread. The cup, they would be sweating profusely. One of them, I stood over literally for a whole hour before this young woman would touch the cup. And all those of us who were there, this is a small group, everybody was assuring her, it's all right, you will not die. This is the power that will enable the powers of darkness that have been operating in your life to be overcome. Finally, she took the cup and drank from it. Now, if Satan understands the power of the blood like that, surely we should. But do you understand the power that you're participating in every time we have communion? This is why I say to you, don't focus on praying for one another. The power in this act is not in the prayer of someone who's giving you the gifts. The power is in the gifts. It's in receiving the gifts. The power is in the, the bread, which denotes the body of Christ, and the cup, which denotes the blood of Christ. That's where the power is. Do you believe that when Jesus said, this is my body, that it is? I don't mean the bread becomes physically his body. But do you believe he said, this is my blood of the new covenant? You see, the covenant that we have is with the Lamb of God. And the marriage that we will have is the marriage with the Lamb. 
And the feast that we will participate in in heaven is the feast of the Lamb. So everything is focused on the Lamb. I feel like hauling out of the past some of the songs we used to sing about the Lamb. But we'll have some new songs. Because, you know, if we're going to have breakthrough praise, and I, I know Pete and others are sort of getting some new songs now, we need to be praising the Lamb and proclaiming victory in our praise through the Lamb of God. So this is why I said yesterday morning, you know, the breakthrough comes through the blood of the Lamb. Now, what about the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus is the name of the Lamb. That's what gives the name. You see, the name in Scripture denotes the person. But the person of Jesus is the Lamb who has overcome. The Lamb who is reigning in heaven. The Lamb that others are falling before and worshiping. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We will be married to the Lamb. We will participate in the Lamb's heavenly feast. I think I made the point. Or rather, the Word of God has made the point. So the name is not a piece of magic. It's not if we just use the name, this, that, and the other is going to happen. When we use the name, our faith needs to be, I'm using the name of the Lamb of God who has overcome, who has won the victory, who has defeated the enemy, who has overcome all the powers of darkness. It's the name of the Lamb of God. And the word of our testimony is the word about the Lamb. So our faith is in the word. But it's the word of the Lamb. It's the name of the Lamb. Our faith is in the Lamb. We have the authority of the Lamb of God who has already overcome. So do you understand now what, what we are to be doing, not just making a lot of noise and it sounds good, it sounds powerful, but we are actually proclaiming the victory of the Lamb. That by the blood of Jesus, he has overcome, so we have overcome. So the scripture says that God always leads us in his triumphant procession in Christ. Why? Because he is the Lamb of God who has triumphed. Now it's strange. I'll just finish with this, then we're going to pray. It's strange that first scripture that we read from Revelation this morning. How could John see the Lamb standing and yet looking as if he had been slain? Of course, this is pictorial language, isn't it? Visionary language. The Lamb is Jesus. And he bears those wounds. Exactly here, right here, in this specific spot, there was one occasion when I was worshiping God. I was on my face. I used to spend hours on my face before the Lord. I've got to an age where it's not very comfortable to do that. Now, and sadly, not for very long anyway. I do it for shorter periods of time. But sometimes I could spend a long time on my face before him. But I was on my face before him. And there I saw, as actually I quite frequently have seen, because I worship at his feet, I saw his feet and the wounds in his feet. But on this occasion, the Lord said to me, 
reach out your hand and put it in the wound. And I reached out my hand and put it in the wound. And as soon as I did that, it was like a violent electric shock passed right the way through me from the head to the feet. Now, nobody else saw anything there. Nobody else was aware of what was happening. This was just a vision that God was giving me. But boy, did it teach me the power that is in those wounds. Because it's through those wounds that the blood was shed. That wasn't anything that I could imagine. It was shoo! Now, I'm not inviting you to get on your face and try to have an experience like that. I'm just telling you because this is the power that is available to us. It is the power of the blood, the power that was shed from those wounds, the power of the resurrected, glorified, ascended Christ who is now the Lamb of God at the center of the throne. So we're going to worship the Lamb. Then we're going to come to the prelude of the marriage supper of the Lamb. And that's how I want you to understand communion. This is the nearest I can get to the marriage supper in heaven. One day I shall be there. One day I shall be part of that. But here I can feast on the Lamb. I'm feasting on the Lamb. It's the bread of the Lamb who was sacrificed for me. It's the blood of the Lamb that cleanses me, makes me holy, perfect in his sight, acceptable to him, gives me the victory over all the powers of darkness. Come on, let's get to our feet. Come into the middle. Let me tell you, there is no other way of breakthrough. You can talk about the God of the breakthrough, and he is the God of the breakthrough, but why is he the God of the breakthrough? Because of the blood of the Lamb. It's the blood of the Lamb that makes him the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. And it's only through the blood that we will ever have the breakthrough. So come on, let's lift our hands, our hearts, our voices. Worship the Lamb. say before we get before we get carried away it's good to get on your face before the Lord when that is right for you not because others are doing it or not because I've spoken about it but let me tell you the purpose of being on your face is not to go to sleep it's not to be silent those of you who've been around for a while I tell you you do not remain silent you keep praising, you keep pouring out your heart, you keep worshiping the Lamb until He speaks to you. Then you shut up and listen. And then having listened, you respond to what He says. But the purpose of being on your face before Him is not just to lie there silent in His presence. It's to engage with Him, the one who is on the throne, the one who is in the midst of heaven for us. So if you ever want, I'm not, I'm not saying do it now because we've got a limitation of time now. This has taken a little bit longer to speak about, but it's so important. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do it in the keynote. And, and yesterday morning at the end of, of the 8 o'clock, God said, no, tomorrow. Lead tomorrow. Then I went and saw that Clive was meant to be doing, and he's not here, so I thought, that's it, yeah. <laughs> the Lord said tomorrow, so tomorrow is today. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Worship him. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Lamb of God. Bless you, Lamb of God. O paparazandaria lero bacalacito di santum. O paparazandaria lero bacalacito di sandaria lero bacalacito. O paparazan, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth. 
and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and power. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lamb of God. You are worthy, Lord Jesus, Lamb of God. For you were slain for us. You poured out your blood for us. We thank you that you have made it possible for us to be washed in your blood and made pure and holy in your sight. Thank you that you entered into the Holy of Holies carrying your blood as a sacrifice. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord, that blood makes us holy in your sight. Thank you, Lord, that by your blood you have overcome all the powers of the evil one. Hallelujah. We have a defeated enemy because of your blood. Praise your holy name. Bless your holy name. Papara Sandaria Lero Bacala Sandaria Lero Bacala Sidama. Papara Sandaria Lero Bacala Sidari Sandama. Oh, Papara Sandaria Lero Bacala Sidama. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, praise him for that blood. Praise the Lamb of God. Worship the Lamb of God. I worship you, my Lord, my Savior. I praise you for your blood. I thank you for your blood. Hora tapara sandaria lero bakara zidoba. O papara sandaria lero bakara zato bakara zinoma. O papara sandaria lero bakara zidri sandoma. O papara sandaria lero bakara zidri sando. O papara sandaria lero bakara zinoma. O papara sandaria lero bakara zinoma. Lord, I thank you for the blood of the new covenant. I thank you, Lord, that you took that cup at the Last Supper and you said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many. Lord, I thank you that when those Satanists tasted of the cup, all the power that the devil had over them was broken. And they were set free. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. O papara zandaria lero bakara sitri santoma. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Glorious King. Come on, we praise you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Papara zandaria lero bakara sitri santoma. O papara zandaria lero bakara sitri santoma. O papara zandaria lero bakara sitoma. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on there. In heaven, they praise the Lamb with a loud voice. In heaven, they praise the Lamb with a loud voice. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Papara sandaria lero bakala zada bakala sinama. Oh, papara zalabaria lero bakala sidri sandama. Oh, papara sarabaria lero bakara sidri sandama. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Papara sandam. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Oh, bless your holy name. Papara sandabalanama. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you that you are the only one worthy to open the seals. Oh, we thank you that there was someone found worthy to unfold all the purposes of God. And we bless you. We praise you. Oh, 
Basada Bari Alero Bacala Sato Bacala Zanduma. Bastigalari Alero Bacala Sito di Sandari Alero Bacala Sito di Santo. O Pasada Bari Alero Bacala Sito di Santoma. O Papara Sandari 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 Alero Bacala Sito di Santo. O papara zandari alero bakala sita di sanduma. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise your holy name. The name of the Lamb of God. The name of Jesus, Savior. The name of the Christ, the Anointed One. We praise you, we bless you, that at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Oh, hallelujah, that the Lamb of God is Lord. That on the night that you were betrayed, you took bread, and when you'd given thanks, you broke it, gave it to your disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, you took the cup. And when you had given thanks, you gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Come on, praise him for the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. The victory of his blood. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, come on. I, I said victory. Praise him for the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening to this Kingdom Faith podcast. We trust it's been an encouragement to you. For more information and resources by Kingdom Faith and for our other audio and video podcasts, please visit kingdomfaith.com.